In this video, you will learn the basket weave stitch. It is one of the most basic needlepoint stitches comprised of tent stitches worked on the diagonal. It gets its name from the woven pattern it creates on the back of your canvas. Basket weave is best used on areas of the canvas with a large repeat, so you won't use this for outlines or letters. It is best used on projects that will be used frequently, such as chairs, stools, and pillows, although it can be used on every single project you do. In this video, you will learn what steps and pulls are and how to get the most coverage with your thread without warping your canvas. Before you begin stitching, you will need to tie a waist knot in your thread. So I will take the end of my thread and just tie a regular knot. Before we begin stitching, we will need to do two things. First, we will need to place our waist knot on the top of our canvas about an inch from where our first stitch will begin either horizontally or vertically. The second thing we'll need to do is take a look at the way that our canvas mesh is woven. Since it is woven, we will have canvas threads that sit on top of each other. When a vertical thread canvas thread sits on top of a horizontal canvas thread, this is called a pull. When a horizontal canvas thread sits on top of a vertical canvas thread, this is called a step. In basket weave, it's important to take note of which canvas thread lies on top because this will dictate which direction your diagonal row goes. So when our horizontal canvas threads are over our vertical canvas threads, we will climb up the steps. So this means we will move our diagonal row on the upwards. When our vertical canvas thread sits over our horizontal canvas thread, these are called poles and we will slide down our poles. So the saying is climbing up your steps and sliding down your poles. I'll show you. To begin, you'll place a single tent stitch. Each of our stitches will cross over one canvas intersection. Each canvas intersection is surrounded by four canvas holes. So one, two, three, four. We're always working from the bottom left-hand corner to the top right-hand corner crossing over that intersection in the middle. So I'll go ahead and place my first stitch. I'll come directly next to my previous stitch to place my second stitch. I'm gonna take notice of which canvas thread is on top. I can see that my vertical canvas thread is sitting on top of my horizontal canvas thread. So this means that my next row will move on the downwards diagonal. So after placing that stitch, I'll count one canvas hole down and one canvas hole over for my second stitch. For my next stitch, I'll come directly below. I'll take a look at which canvas threads is sitting on top to figure out which way my row is gonna go. So my horizontal thread is over my vertical thread this means that I will move my row on the upwards. So I'll count over one canvas hole, up one canvas hole to place my next stitch. And I'll continue working that row up until I meet my previous stitches. I'll come directly next to it to begin my next row. And I'll see that my vertical canvas thread is sitting on top of my horizontal canvas thread meaning that my row should tread downwards. You can also see that I'm beginning to stitch over my thread from my waist knot. I'll be anchoring this thread so that all of my stitches are secure. I'm just gonna continue on with this pattern making sure I'm checking myself for my canvas threads sitting on top to see which direction my diagonal rows will go. You can see that there are areas where my next stitch wants to go to tuck up into my previous stitches.
working with the mesh and the way that it's woven will help you not get a stripey look in your basket weave and it'll help to not warp your canvas. Basket weave will give you the best coverage as it creates a woven pattern in the back. Once you've either completed stitching your design area or run out of threads, you'll need to turn your canvas over to finish off your thread. After you've flipped your canvas, you'll see that we've created this nice woven pattern on the back, which is how basket weave gets its name. To finish off your thread, you'll just run your needle and thread through a few of the stitches only on the back side of your canvas. You'll wanna do this either horizontally or vertically, never diagonally, because that will push through to the front of your canvas, creating a stripy or a bumpy look. Once you've woven your needle and thread through a few stitches, you're good to go ahead and trim. You can see that this piece of thread is where our waist knot was. You can also trim that. Your thread is secure on your canvas on both ways from start to finish and that is how you do the basket weave stitch.